Welcome back everybody. Kathy Arbor here and today we're going to be doing kind of a landscape um, in my sketchbook with some watercolor, a little bit of line work with ink. If you have watercolor paper you can use that. Just checking to see if this lighting is pretty good. Hey! Lena, first in chat. <laughs> How's the lighting there? Could it be a little lighter? Oh, am I frozen? Let me see. Oh, this is good. It looks great. Nice and bright. Okay. So I'm going to pop out chat. Hey, Pam. Am I frozen for you guys? It's because on my screen, it looks like it's frozen. Not frozen? Okay, that's strange. Huh. Okay, I'm going to close my YouTube and just look on the StreamYard. That way I don't have any internet issues. All right. So, um, if you missed it, uh, this is the scrapbook challenge that Lena, and she is in chat right now, Miss Linux 2010, and she's a fantastic artist, so check her channel out. And we're doing a sketchbook challenge, and it's uh, finish a sketchbook in 10 hours. Now, we did this on Sunday, and... Um, was Sunday, wasn't it? <laughs> it's flying by. And I did mine in a concertina sketchbook that I made. And I'll be doing this half tomorrow. And we're going to start at 5 p.m. Eastern. And we'll um, be doing, and there's no topic, there's no certain types of medium that you use. It's basically Finish a sketchbook, get some ideas, experiment, have some fun, and um, you have an awesome sketchbook that you've learned from. So uh, the first five hours is already up, and it's on my channel. You can check that out. And today we're going to be doing a... Uh, this, that's what we did last week. I haven't done any more to it. And we'll be using this page. And I was thinking of doing um, just to, only on this page here. And I think I'll, I'm going to do a landscape, kind of like a evening landscape to represent this is the end of summer. And the kids are going back to school and it's calm and it's quiet. And for me, that's looking out on the lake or a river in, just at dusk and you, or even dawn. And you see that beautiful mist on the river and or on the lake and there's ducks or loons out there just paddling along and it's calm and you don't hear that um, rat race of cars or any kind of kids or it's just quiet. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I always remember that because that's when my kids were going back to school and it's just seemed like you took a deep breath and exhaled. <laughs> 
was calm. Finally back to normal. <laughs> Thanks, Lena. Yes, memories. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the landscape and next week will be actually September and we'll be putting on a, the letter S over top of it. And I was thinking maybe finding some Celtic type of um, lettering maybe to put on in gold. I thought that would be kind of cool. But we're just going to do the landscape for, for today. So this is scrapbook paper. Or not scrapbook. Um, sketching paper. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. And it can be, depending on what type it is, some are a little more absorbent than others. This one, I can move the watercolor a little bit. It's not um, for long, though. But if you've got watercolor paper, it would probably be a little easier if you wanted to move it. So I kind of have to do a lot of drying when I use this paper. Because if you don't, it starts to pill. And that means the... Every time you use your brush on the paper, it kind of rubs it and it, it leaves these little pieces of paper rolled up on your paper and you don't want that. So to, get, to stop that from happening, what you do is dry it in between your layers. So I got some water on the side here and I want to put in kind of a warm color of uh, blue on the top and then going into a, a warm sienna kind of color on, below and that can be kind of tricky um i probably want it to go about there so they say the easiest way of doing it is to put your yellows in first so I have a nice, let's see, this is a raw sienna that I could use here. And I'm going to have some clouds in, more or less in the raw sienna. And then a little bit of, hmm, let's see, Indian yellow might be nice. Watered down a lot. Let's see. I got a piece of paper here. Yeah, that's not bad. I can warm it up with a little bit of, of the uh, sienna. Yeah, that's what a loo. So I want to start off. Okay, this is wet. So I'm going to wet it again. I'm going to put a little bit. I want it a little brighter on the bottom. And just a smidgen of <clears throat> that going in. So just a bit more in there. Okay. And then I want to dry it. I don't want to put the blue on because it'll turn green. So there is quite a bit of drying when you're using sketchbook paper, but also I like using it in a sketchbook because there's no preciousness about the paper. So I'm more than likely to try things out more than I would if I had real expensive watercolor paper. Now, you can get some watercolor sketchbooks and they're just fine too. I just don't want to um, feel I got to do the best when it's expensive paper. You guys probably understand where I'm coming from. So now I'm just going to wet the top area here. I think I'll bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to, I have some blue here. No, oh, that's dirty. Dirty brush. 
I want a clean color. So I'm going to use the cobalt blue here. But very, very light. I'm going to actually clean that area. I want it very watered down. I want it light. And your colors will go on lighter. Don't blend in too much, though. And then just a smidgen of the darker right on the very top. Okay. And then I'm just going to soften that edge just a bit. Now, the clouds are, because it's dusk or dawn, it depends what you want it to be. Um, mine are going to be more on the sienna color. I might put a, just a tad of um, a warm red in it, maybe, just a smidge. We'll see. But this is um, uh, Daniel Smith uh, raw sienna. It's a really nice color. And I want that dry because I don't want it seeping. So the clouds are going to be in the sienna color and maybe just a bit of, hmm, I got some red in here, just to warm it up a little bit. Here, and you see that? It's just a little bit warmer with that red in there. And I'm going to make some clouds, and these are kind of, Blotchy clouds, actually. So they might have a little, you could take a sponge and do this too. Um, or even a paper towel will work. And just go over top of it and take some out. Now it's not going to do it as well as if you put it on um, watercolor paper. But a little bit here and there. And then just a little bit of blue just to darken some of these a little bit. And it'll mix with this sienna a little. Kind of turn it a, a gray color. So just add a little bit of those clouds to be darker. A few marks here and there just to give it a little bit more dimension. Maybe they're dark. It's going to rain or a storm's going to be coming in. That I like how crinkling sketchbook pages get when they have been worked on. Yeah, they do. I like that crinkly sound too. 
All right, so now we're gonna, this is a very simple um, watercolor that anyone can do. So we're gonna basically do an atmospheric background. So we're looking uh, probably on a river and you're, the water will be down here, maybe a little island in here, um, or just part of it you see and then um, the trees in the background. No, you're not gonna see any definition in the trees. It's going to be more or less a silhouette, but you don't want it black. You want it more on either the purpley blue side, but, but fairly dark, or even um, indigo would work, or Payne's gray is another great one when doing this. And it's pretty uniform as far as at the top where the tree line will be. And then you lighten it as you go into the water. So um, you can sketch out where you want your trees if you want, um, or you can just leave it. It's up to you. I think I'll just, uh, Put a few marks in now I want kind of a uh, if you have a even one of these these uh, fans if you have a fan it for watercolor that would be good I think I do I should yes so I have a fan here this is a uh, Skoda because I want irregular shape so first I'm going to get some of, I think I'll use Payne's Gray by Windsor Newton. I'm just going to put some here, fair amount. Wet brush. Now you can practice on a piece of paper if you want of how this brush is going to work. So um, trees, depending on what tree kind of trees you're you're going to be putting in, just practice. Either just dots or lines, depending on what type of tree it is. So let's put a few, maybe right about here. So I'm gonna have a line down, maybe this is a, it doesn't have to be perfect. And trees that were in the, in the woods, they're not perfect. They're usually broken or um, one side's bigger than the other. That type of thing. And use different brushes too. So I'm just going to basically I can just put some lines up where I want some of these trees and maybe a larger one in here. Or maybe there's a hill there. I'm just making this up. But don't make a straight line. It looks better if uh, if it's uh, irregular. Okay, so then I can take this down. And this, because you're not gonna see the trees the way you would. I'm going to make that one bigger.
All right, and then I want lots of water in this. So I'm going to It's wet. I'm going to take some of this out right here. dry that first. I think I'll, I may even use uh, some gouache today. So, let's see. I think we're going to put an even darker. This time I want to go into a very, almost black. So, Let's see. I'm going to take some of this umber color and mix it with that blue. And that should give me a really dark color, almost black. And now I'm going to make um, probably, probably around here. I'm just going to have these, this line of, could be a, a little piece of island, or maybe the, maybe it's like a horseshoe shape um, bay area. And I want that filled in. Like that. And then you can put little sticks or whatever to make it um, nice and even because it wouldn't be. You can even use your, your fan brush for this just to make an uneven edge. Maybe there's some bushes. And then I'm going to have one tree going up and out. There'll be bushes behind it or in front of it, but because it's silhouetted, you're not sure.
Maybe there's, I don't know, pumpkin tree over here. And then you'll you'll have that in the water also in the ripple of the water so you'll see a little bit of the island so just skip it along fairly and we'll we'll add other colors to this here but i think actually i think i want a little bit more that paint's gray again. And it would be a little darker right here in here. Closest to the land would be darker. And then we'll add more. Okay, this tree is going to be thick, and then I want to add branches. So that you just remember you would have broken branches, and these I'm going to make a pine so. Pine trees sometimes grow very um, to be dead at branches and broken ones, but it's more a silhouette, so you're not seeing uh, the detail. And we'll, we'll come in with um, a little bit of pen work, too. I just want... Oops. The basics in there. Let's darken that a little bit more. What I'm thinking is when I put the letter S over top of it, it's going to be in gold. Hi, Juanita. Finishing up your lunch with us. What are you having? I haven't had lunch yet. There might be a lot of okay. So now I'm going to put a bit more of that in here. You'd see this one here. Tark. Depending on how your um, 
thick your branches are and leaves. Might be a little darker there. Just a few little dabs in there. Like that. And maybe a little bit darker. Some of this area here. that seep in. All right, so let's dry that. like this. I think I'm going to put a couple little um, birds in there, like a duck or a loon. Let's see. I'm just going to use my pencil for now. I'm just thinking of the letter S. So maybe right one in here or maybe two. They have a fairly big Peak. And this is just a, it'll be a silhouette too. You won't really know exactly what they are, but let's see. I could probably use a uh, black too since it's a silhouette. And then we'll use wash to make some highlights.
think that should be good enough. Let's make this guy a little bit longer. Like that. Okay. Let's get some gouache. see what we got in here so we want kind of the same color yellowy gold so we have an ochre color and yellow light a little bit of white and a palette we need a palette uh, where did I put that? I had one somewhere. A little bit of ochre. I think I could probably just use what's on here. It doesn't have to be a lot. And some yellow. stirring. Ochre. Now zinc white. too. Wipe this off. So I don't want to contaminate it right off the bat. Just get some of that off. Make sure it's clean. Oh, that's very runny. All right. So I just have a different brush here. So what I want to do is put um, just a few lighter areas. So I want to make up a little bit of this yellow light with some yellow. I don't want it too bright. Maybe a smidgen of that. And we'll just have a, just a bit of a lighter color coming in the water here, probably around the, these guys. It'd be a little bit lighter. Get 
Oh, pretty. I should have put these guys in last. I can always put them back in. The nice thing about um, adding your gouache is you can go over top. Now you can't scrub it, but if you if you're putting in some areas that are lighter over dark. It, it just uh, helps you. Just gonna, I think I'm going to put this guy. I can go back over top of it too with um, the regular watercolor and put things back in if I want. That's the nice thing about it. Adding a little warmer tone in around the bird. And then a little bit more white. And I'm just going to put in here mostly um, this light color. So that it would be clearing the um, this area so you'd see more of that bright sunset. You could put glue back in too. more of that warm color. Oops. 
Uh, just around in here. I'm just going to go back over with some of that dark color again. And then I can also use some of that brush. This color in here just a smidge, just dabs. See, goes right over top. And soften it by just wetting it too. You don't want them really hard. And then let's coat those birds in. Oh, actually, I could use um, pen too. Let's get a really hard line in here. A little bit more of this dark color. One water edge. Like that. Can't really see the tree or anything like that. Alright, so we can dry that now. And use some pen work. Actually, I think I'm going to put a little bit more blue in here. Just like that. Okay. 
Okay, so we can take a, let's see, that's a number three. It's a fairly small nib. Now I can take uh, and draw more detail in the tree um, by smaller branches. Uh, if you have a, a zero one, that's, you could use that too. Um, I'm going to put a few more colors of, uh, well, not colors, black um, in here for the foliage. Like some of this would have um, the pine needles on it. So we got to put some of those in. Let's just put a, a few of these in first, though. I just like playing with the gnarly tree. here. Could go in black more too, just to make it stand out more. It'd be kind of cool. You got a, a big brush pen, you could use that. Maybe we'll get a big brush pen out. Make this darker in here. Um, brush pen. Let's see, I, should, I might have a. Yep, I do. This is the Zig. So let's use this. Yeah, that's nice. A little bit thicker. Here. And this tree can actually be a lot darker. That. Just use the thickness of your brush to make either fine marks or Thick marks. Then I'm going to take my brush again. Let's see if we can make another fairly thick. Some of this brown. black and then we'll just add some
here. Hi, Anne. Hey, Flo. Just stopped in. Thanks, Flo. Have a good day. Okay, so let's dry that. I want to add this to be taller over here. So we're going to take that bluey color and just make this a little bit uh, taller over here. And I think. Uh, I'm just going to clean up that edge a little bit so it kind of seeps. So it's more, uh, oh, how do you say it? Atmospheric. <laughs> Um, now that I think I need a little bit more dark in here, just a few, just to represent this thick. thickness of those branches. You're seeing the reflection in the water there. All right, let's fix these birds up. I'm just going to clean the edge up a little bit. I could probably go in with that. Um, watercolor brush. Those are great. They have a really nice sharp point on them. Let me finish that up. Oops, wipe that off. There we go. And just color in with this. You see how fine a point they have? They're great. And I've had these for a long time. And they're still working great. So they're great for this type of thing.
that. Okay. Oops, let's give that another go, another dry. I need this color down here just a little bit more just a smidge That. That's better. All right. So there's that part. Let's see. There's no detail. It's all silhouette. Very simple to do. You guys can do it. And what I'm going to do is have a the letter S for what time is it? Uh, that's only two o'clock. I could actually do it now. Maybe I will. May as well. So. Okay. I'm going to draw the letter S that I want. So I have this book. I saw the S there. I love this S that they use. So that's what we're going to do. But I want it fairly big. So let's see into my page. Here. So I want it to go under here. So it's kind of Got to be bigger than that racer. So basically, it's got to be like something like that. That's fine. I take this out. Uh -huh. Not too wide.
This has to be fatter. change the title. <laughs> the letter S for September. I can't believe it's September. It's crazy. Went by so fast this year. What do you guys think? Did summer go by for you guys real quick? I did here. I think it was because we were allowed to do things this year. Not going to be exactly the same, but um, let's see. I think this. So this is this is how I work. <laughs> I'll try things and then once I like what I got, then I'll put it on. This is just a smidgen. Thick. Um, I think this needs to come up more. Like that. That's not bad. You could make this wider. So if it comes out. Like that. Actually, 
Um, let me think. Wonky there. Can you imagine the monks doing this stuff? I would imagine some of them went crazy. <laughs> I would. <laughs> okay, so should I put the Celtic design in there? I could. So it's two half moons right here. Basically, it's a circle. And another and a figure eight, basically. No, it's not. How can that be? Hmm. Here's the center. So I think that needs to go like that. And then this one's too long. Talking to myself. Well, talking to you guys. Mm, still too long. And it's not evenly spaced there. So. that it's from the center still a little bit too long Let's see from there to the center here oh, I just did that That's right. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I know. They had fun as well. If you look in the book of Kells, they have in one place a figure looking over a capital letter and the feet are in the wrong place. <laughs> It could be fun and it could have been, <laughs> it went crazy. <laughs> Depends how you want to look at it. So, okay, so. This one is over. Mm 
And then this one is over. And meaning they cross. Okay. And this one goes like this. And then this one is under. Actually, it's a, goes like that. This one is under. This one is under. This one is over and under. Cool. And then you have your dots. Actually, that's probably more like that. And then they have these things. <laughs> so they're kind of like a leaf. Let me think. Okay, I'm going to cut this out. My scissors. So what I'm planning on doing is using this as a stencil, um, just the shape of the S. And then I'll have to either draw by hand the the um, design in the center or I could actually cut it out too with a pair of um, an exacto knife
just to get a template. And decide whether I'm going to use the negative or the positive of this. So Here's my ducks. They can be sitting. Oh, I could take this down a little bit too. Like that. So my ducks are there. I got it upside down. <laughs> I knew it looked funny. Okay. No, oh, then my text don't fit. I'm gonna have to bring it down. Because I don't want to paint over my tucks. Well, that'll work. Do that. This over like that. Yeah. All right. So I could take a. I think I'm gonna get a white chalk. Or charcoal pencil. I should have one in here somewhere. I think. Right in there. in a row. Okay. Let's see if this works. That'll work. Wonder if I should. Yeah, I'll leave it because I don't want to put it up too far because then it. it um, now. Yeah. 
what to put over top of this. I think I'm going to have to use acrylics. Okay. Uh, I do have this. I have some... I'm just looking for some, if I have any uh, gum Arabic. I don't know if I do. I, have, um, I think I can just mix this with water. If I remember correctly. Mix with little water. Well, there you go. This is a pigment with, I guess it must have its own binder. Um, where did that? Small, I want a real small brush though. And I want something to put it in. I have a ton of these lids. <laughs> so you may as well use them. And Take this I don't know how much to use so just pop it on you can get this in many colors or this is bronze uh, pale gold schmicky you can get silver and pearl and then you're just a smidgen of water. So let's put a little squirt. Not sure how much to use here. I think this comes with copper, bronze, gold, silver. You just mix it. See how it covers. I'm not sure how opaque it is. I think I used it once before, but I don't remember what on. Yeah. Very uh Right. All right.
guess you shouldn't do it over the top of there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more water, I think. There. So a little bit goes a long way, guys. Obviously. Let's see how it how I'll do this part here. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh. have to have a steady hand. Whew. Breathe when you're doing this. <laughs> Don't um, go over it too many times with your brush because that dark paint will come up. Now, I didn't put the Celtic thing on, but I could go back over it with black or white. So I'm guessing that this, I think this is permanent once it's dry. It's not like a watercolor. It's more um, like an acrylic. Um, hi, Mariah. This is by Schminky. Um, oh, there you go. Thanks, uh, Lena. It's beautiful. And I like the fact that you can just mix up what you would 
indeed just water I can't remember who I saw using this. Because it was definitely somebody I saw because that's how we work. <laughs> By enabling people. just have to have the right consistency for it to run off your brush properly. Fix up this edge. It's very uh, concentrating. Nerve wracking business here. Great, so let's give that a dry and see if it moves after. Look at that, because we could put a little bit more. That's not bad, actually. One coat really seems to cover it, but we're going to dry it. <laughs> Sorry, Dot. <laughs> nice stuff. Yep. 
So I'm going to just take a brush here and see if it moves down here. Yep, it does. So it does move. So it's more like a watercolor, but super, super thick. So that's very interesting though. Oops, too much water. All right. Okay, so I'm going to dry that a little bit. <laughs> I passed the gilding test. <laughs> Thanks, Lena. That's super awesome though. I like it. All right. So I think, where did I put that thing? What do you think? Should we put this on in black? If we were going to put it on black, though, where do they have it in there? Let's see. Let's see. Well, it's full, so it's just wherever they're crossing, they left an area. So I could always go back over those areas with the gold. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Why not? So let's see. So it's a zero, uh, an O, probably about midway. Do I see my, I see it a bit, zero, and across like that, actually it goes like that. I can go back over this. Um, Here, approximately. And this I'm going to bring up because I want it even like that. Okay. All right. This I'm going to have to do in black paint. So I'm just going to use the Posca. Is that black embossing powder? I don't know how that would work on this stuff, though. And I don't, I don't think I have an embossing pen. Um, I 
Let's see. So I'm just going to put... And this one crosses over. So I This might be a little bit on the wonky side. We'll see. But we'll get the gist of it. Then there'll be a line there. Like this. We'll have a line there. crosses over and then there'll be this crosses over let me see okay so this crosses over so that means oh, I'll have to go back over this one I think And put a gold, a little bit of gold in there. So we can probably touch it up. So I'm not worried about that. Okay, and okay, so that one has to be the thickest one. Yeah. And there's dots. It looks like they're all the same size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of course. Six, 
five, six, oh. All right, and uh, what else? Um, quick, quick, before that dries up, I'm going to fix that. All right, so right here. Right here. That. Um, I cut them all. This one. That. That. That's it. Okay. There. And well, let's try these squiggly things. So it's basically a clover or an oval. That and then this one. Almost like that. And then this one. Goes like that. And then we just have the things on the end. And then I'll, I'm just going to color them all in and then I'll put the gold back in just so that it doesn't drive me crazy. And the gold. Oh, I'll do the other one first. I'll give it time to dry. Do this one upside down. Okay. This one might be a little bit smaller. So this one. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit smaller, but it'll match.
that. All right. Then we can take that brush again. Where is it? There it is. And the gold, and there's a definite crisscross, so we can put those in. So let's see, this one goes over. That means goes over. That one. Wait a minute. Yeah, it goes over that one under this one. So that means it's crossed. And then over this one. Like that. That wasn't hard. Let's fix that point up a little bit. And um, over under. Over, under. Yeah. Okay. I used to have a ton of stained glass patterns for Celtic, so <laughs> I should see if I can dig them up. I used to do a lot of Celtic windows. Um, I think I'm going to outline it though. I like, I'm going to dry it first and outline it. Hi, Mariah. Have a good day. Thanks for popping in. The trick is to follow it like a rope. And as you go, you have to recognize it's always under, over, under, over, under, over type of thing.
I just don't want to get my hand in the wet paint. So that's why I'm turning it around. time play enjoy your time doing it I can remember when I first started doing the Celtic windows. You don't want to make a mistake when you're doing that with glass. <laughs> it's not good. Very expensive mistake. That's why you learn the tricks of how to view it and get it in your head <laughs> properly. All right, I think that's cool. Um, I think I'm going to put some dots here. Only three. What do you think? It's a little wonky, but not bad. I like it. Yes, very precise. When you're working with stained glass, cutting things out, you have to be precise because the next piece won't fit. And even if it's a 16th out, if you figure out that with each piece, it gets, your pattern gets shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> so you really have to have a precise um, pattern. Now I could leave it like that or I could bring some of these branches over. I don't know. What do you think? Picture the Viking wood carvers. They also had one try. Never yes, exactly, Lena. That's right. I think it looks amazing as it is. Okay. That was fun. September. So that one will be... Where did I put my... Today is the 8th, the 30th. So 8, 30, 22. I could write September right here, too. But I know what it is. Now, I could also put a bunch of swatches on the side here of what I used here also. That would be kind of cool. So, let's see. What do I got? 
this so See, I used one, two, three, four, five, roughly. All right, so I used um, paints gray. What was it? Windsor Newton. Daniel Smith, uh, what was it, Raw Sienna, and Core, Burnt Umber. And paint gray, what else did I use? Oh, cobalt blue. And that one was Windsor Newton. And was there any other one I used? Oh, I used some yellow, didn't I? Um, hens are yellow, I think. Did I use yellow? Or a little bit of red? I can't remember. Yeah, I did use yellow. Hens are yellow. Core. Hens are yellow. And I used cad red, I think, and then the gold. I used a little bit of cad red. I used this one. And gold. That was core cad red. And this one was called Red Bottle. Aqua. Okay.
Schminky. Pale Gold. Um, aqua Bronze. Uh, you yellow for, yeah. All right. So, paint's gray. You can just swatch them. Sienna. Burnt Umber. Cobalt blue. And the yellow. Cad red. That was just for touching the, making the clouds a little um, more on the orangey side. And the schminky, where did I put? There it is. So that pretty well did my um, whole letter. I don't know if you could make a bunch of this up because it does react, uh, reactivate. So all right, I think that's it. So there's my page. And then I could still write about it on here going this way. I could do September. The right September here if I wanted to. Even just um let's see where's my pictures. That looks cool. And just uh, nothing really in your face. Probably use the same. Where did I put it? Let's try the brush. I've never done a brush one before. Yeah, isn't that pretty? I really like that gold. Oh, wait a minute. I do, well, I do have those.
I have those um, other calligraphy ones that I could have used too. So just uh, erase. bleed throughs but not too much you can see a little bit on here but that's sketchbook <laughs> it's a place to play all right I think that's it so I hope you had fun and I hope you give it a try and see what you guys can do with a illuminated letter just look them up on the internet, too. There's all kinds. And there's usually um, some free downloads you can get, too. So I'll let you guys go. And tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, Lena and I are going to finish our sketchbook challenge. We have five hours to finish our sketchbook. So I hope you join us um, tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, and it'll be here on my channel. And we don't know what we're going to be doing, so it could be fun. Usually is. <laughs> All right, we'll let you guys go and have a fantastic uh, evening or day or morning or whatever it is for you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>